Bay Indian Center for hosting us and for making us feel very comfortable and welcome. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it over now to Mr. Jesse Shortwell. Hello everybody, I'm Jesse Antoine Shortwell. I'm from the Badlands of South Dakota and I'm a member of the Oglala Lakota Nation. Hello everyone, my name is Joel Cockrum. I'm from the Santo Domingo Pueblo. Um, I'm also part Blackfeet and French Canadian. Um, born and raised here in New Mexico. And welcome to our play. My short and sweet. My name's Courtney Handy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Perla Ancaris and I'm from Santo Domingo Pueblo. Hi, I'm Debbie Savadis. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Shannon Bear. I am a part of the Ho-Chunk tribe of Winnebago, Nebraska. Good evening, my name is Valerie Sarwap. I'm from the Northern Ute tribe, Uncle Pogri Band. I am a creative writer major with a performing arts minor. Hello, I'm Veronica Clark. I'm from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Hi, my name is Jamie Kim. I'm originally from Korea, lived in Los Angeles for a long time, and just moved here uh, a couple years ago. Hello, oh, my name is Douglas Swano Boots. I'm a Saboni Catawba and Swiss descent from War Creek, Kentucky. This world is being watched closely by intelligences greater than man, yet as mortal as his own. We know now that as human beings busy themselves about their various concerns, they were scrutinized and studied, perhaps almost as narrowly as a man with a microscope might scrutinize the transient creatures that swarm and multiply in a drop of water. <laughs> with infinite complacency, people went to and fro over the earth about their little affairs, serene in the assurance of their dominion over this small, spinning fragment of solar driftwood, which by chance or design, man has inherited out of the dark mystery of time and space. <coughs> Yet across it in You are listening to AIR, American Indian Radio's production of Indian Radio Days. The time is now 29 minutes past the hour. I am talking with the first American Indian he is naked and dirty. He is burned dark brown by the sun. He carries a flint-tipped spear. He is the first American Indian. I am not an American Indian. I am not Mongolian. I am from inner space. I am the first character. Please, for the... Please, for the listening audience, what do you mean by that? I'm the four American. Indians came later. That's very interesting. Where are you from? According to my somewhat crude but accurate rock and sun calendar, this is the Pleistine epic. And, Man. You, and you state you are not an American Indian? Nope. White people made American Indians. What did you say? Listen, ma'am. We are all just people. And in fact, people before people that you define. If you aren't an Indian, who are you? Can you tell us the name of your tribe? First, we were all together on the central plains of Africa. One of your ancestors was over there too. Then before we knew it, there was a continental drift. I mean, there was an ocean between us. So we grew up over there, and you grew up over there. We couldn't even talk to each other anymore. So we took a trip. My old lady didn't think I ought to go to France. But I had this gallery, you know, opening in a cave over there. And then I run into these old boys that had heavy eyebrows. So I taught them how to paint. Didn't make any money, though. But I did teach them medicine. Let me interrupt here. Uh, could you clarify some of those statements for us, please? No. <laughs> You are listening to AIR, American Indian Radio's production of Indian Radio Days. The time is now 29 minutes past the hour. This portion of AIR is brought to you by White Cloud Indian Toilet Paper. Exquisitely <laughs> soft to the touch, biodegradable, it won't rub you the wrong way. 
He was white, after all. How did Indians get here if, as you say, you are the Indian? Well, obviously, we've always been here. You don't think you came from Africa? Africa? Are you kidding? I guess you believe that Bering Strait theory, too. Boo! Boo! <laughs> you are listening to Air's production of Indian Radio Days. The time is now 29 minutes past the hour. Coming up next hour is the invasion of the English, French, and the Germans. I'm now standing on a rock. I dare say the Plymouth Rock from all appearances. Who are you, sir? No, 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 no! We've got to send you back. It would only encourage others like yourself to attempt this dangerous and foolhardy trip across the ocean in those flimsy boats. Besides, we don't have the room, and who knows what will happen next. You may try and take our jobs and drive the price of corn to an all-time low. No, 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 no! You must go back. Who are you people? I'm the one of the Indians who met the Mayflower. Boo! Yes. So it's untrue that you've welcomed these poor English prisoners and debtors with open, open arms to the New World for an American Thanksgiving dinner? What do you think, fellow? Well, this is not what we're taught in the history books, so I didn't know. Fellow, do you mean history books or dime novels? No, 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 no! Go back. That's right. I'm afraid you cannot stay. I'm sure Captain Pete Wilson, Rush Limbaugh, and Newt Gingrich will understand. <laughs> You're listening to American Indian Radio's production of Indian Radio Days. The time is now 29 minutes past the hour. I'm on location on the Gulf Coast at the mouth of the mighty Mississippi River with two early adversaries in January 1704. A Choctaw Indian and a Frenchman. The Choctaw is dirty. He is 40 years old. He is mostly naked. Bird feathers stick out of his hair. He is carrying some skins. Written on his chest in big block letters is, Life's a Beach. Tell me, gentlemen, can you explain to our listening audience what you think of each other? In English, please. Monsieur, I don't know what will happen to me. I am thousands of miles away from my home, and I am standing in the breast of the savage. What do you think I should be feeling? I've got these skins, man. Very thick. Very good. Make nice hats. Monsieur Savage. Hmm, let's discuss this business. I-16. Woo! You are listening to Indian Radio Days. This is Air American Indian Radio. The time is now 29 minutes past the hour. It's October 12, 1892. <laughs> A posse of 30 U.S. Marshals have so far failed to move Nesh Rizzi, dead or alive, from his Ozark Mountain home outside of Taliqua, Oklahoma. A full 12 hours of battle, some 38 rounds from a cannon, 2,000 rounds of rifle ammo, have brought these marshals no closer to capturing Mr. Christie. And with me here is Ned's beautiful daughter, Eugenia, to tell us what's going on. Say something to the audience, Eugenia. Hey, everyone! Eugenia, I can call you that, can't I, darling? Yeah. But don't call me darling. Eugenia, this battle seems to be taking on ominous proportions, but with the talk that your father is the last Cherokee warrior and all, and of course that bundle of dynamite over there, those marshals are wrapping might finally finish your father off. Would you say now, after all this, that war is in your father's vein? Well, I guess you could say that. Can you elaborate on that? 
Well, after breakfast yesterday, my pa said, girl, we've been on earth, underrepresented, considered uncivilized, and still they are unconvinced that I have a reason to be fed up. We've been distilled, dissuaded, disbanded, dug up, and now, because I won't surrender, I've been lied to, lied about, worked over, robbed, damn near ruined. The only reason I'm sticking around is to complete the war they began. How's that, darling? <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to AIR, American Indian Radio's production of Indian Radio Days. The time is now 29 minutes past the hour. I am on the San Saba Riverbank in Central Texas on March 2nd, 1847. I am about to witness a historic event. The wild Comanche Indians have just agreed to sign a no-fault treaty with John Musebach of the German Colonial Society of Frankfurt. We will see firsthand how that peace treaty came about. Here, coming towards me, is a Comanche Indian. 